I have finally got another video I want to upload. This one, duh. Um, I apologize it took me a year and a half to get another one made. After what happened in my life in 2020, considering that the majority of those videos I uploaded, the first three initial ones, <clears throat> were only months after what happened in my life had happened, which changed my life drastically. And if you don't know, if you haven't watched them, simply saying I had a motorcycle accident in the year I first became social, and I had a hell of a social theatric play out in which I learned a lot about myself and a lot about humanity in the state that it's in. Trying to get that all into words is not such an easy ordeal, but here in this video I'm going to read what I've written in the last few days, pretty much summarizing as easy as I could what I experienced also a lot of the problems we face nowadays, especially in places what we would call developed countries, which are, as far as I'm aware, not as developed as we like to lie to ourselves about. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into this writing. I've personally been through a tremendously treacherous life, for that there is no doubt. That being said, it sure could have been far worse. Having learned a thing or two from it, I've decided to thrust myself into the currently chaotic state of human political affairs. My main priority here is to help others not be so blind as to the reality we all face, but many cannot comprehend. Often kept in the dark by one's own state of insecurities and doubts, not to forget circumstances. We're all now in an overcomplicated world where truly knowing yourself can mean the difference between a proper life and a life spent in hell. In asserting that I know anything about Asperger's or the diagnosis of it, obviously on the high, high functioning side, it directly imposes upon what's so suddenly becoming a part of human identity politics, no longer being a label to describe a behavioral differentiation, but to explain a feeling, which is obviously hard to describe, hence why it's now becoming almost a tribalist kind of nature with it. As I've heard so many times, and heard so many people self-diagnose themselves with it, even though the word means nothing in the grand scheme that is life, which is why I've learned the most dangerous virus known to man, words and ideas, nothing short of possession. The idea of being disabled, the idea of being other, all the while being treated as such, provided, providing no means of escape from a prison not of our own choosing, only causing us to be sent blind into this world to erect our own prison bars out of our own dumb free will. Of course I know how this feels, and I also know how little people outside of yourself care for such little about little about such matters, for they often have their own life and its realities to contend with, often only worsening the estranged treatments if one was to assert such a diagnosis in the interest of, I don't know what, I've done it once, and I received weird treatments because of it, only furthering the worse, worsening of social treatment, I would say which only serves to exacerbate the person's social issues in the process, hence what I just said, the first issue being labeling the aforementioned disorder as it gives the person something to identify their issues in life with. A word or a name often causes many to overlook or overthink why said issues exist, leaving them to fumble about in the labyrinth. Strangely enough, strangely enough Hans Asperger himself was against the idea of labeling children in front of them. Only then would they be aware of an issue or differentiation with their behavior, thus they now have a word to describe their mental state, <clears throat> of which back then wasn't called Asperger's. This practice of labeling mental states of mind can be completely re needs to be completely reevaluated, as it's nearly like America has adopted a practice of making people weaker by saying and treating the few as such, in which they become it, from which I'd learned it's possible to break out of, not that such is a painless journey all the while not having a clue how to fix it. In America, the common resort is to is either, either through prescriptions or in conversations with a therapist who never had to contend with realities, the reality after having been through special education treatments. Often only receiving a simple answer or perceived easy fix, which only leads many to feel like zombies or shells of their real selves. Sorry, my throat is just bad tonight. <clears throat> I've learned that manipulating humans to think lesser of themselves is a rather simple feat. 
Place them in an egocentric society that shames proper virtues and praises degeneration, most simply, simply crumble under such weight, while others simply follow the chaotic flow. Behind the line, that's to say, before I understood myself and the planet that I was on, I hadn't a clue of the offsets created by what's said to be proper treatment under a guise of blind and false compassion, good intentions. Instead, this system created something far worse in me, a free thinker as a consequence. As I felt alienated from humanity, the painful process of trying to understand the why began, which was 2016. Hell, that started far earlier. Being placed in special education since kindergarten where I saw no shortage of special treatments through America's educational system, at a time when one's social learning is rather necessary in order to become an active participant in society while also doing something they're passionate about to cultivate a proper state of individuality. I'm not sure you've heard of the notion. I, I'm sure you've heard of the notion. It's not what you know, it's who you know. God forbid I'm not such a fan of it. As far as my life was concerned, all I had was my passion and nobody to help me along or point the way, with not many to relate it with. Par for the course in the dog-eat-dog -dog tactics used to drive economies. Where there's a soul lost, there's a means to exploit it. Separate us and tell us all to carve our own life's path, where we become possessed by the idea of being so different from one another, this self-possession idea is the root of many of society's problems that we now currently face. Now we can't even talk to each other where we've severed all connections to one another, becoming nothing but islands of vastly differing realities. To a point where what we all share is the burden that's created as a consequence. Consequences one might not notice until it's too late to backtrack or to make amends. Circumstances that never rear its ugly head until it gets personal. Hence 2020 in my case. It was almost like I, I skipped the learning and s learning of socializing in high school and then in 2020, it came full circle when I started becoming social, and then I learned how that really is, and it's not such a pretty sight, especially figuring out what the hell these things have done to our brains. Many things have come to my attention that are steadily rotting the human spirit to the core, that I laid witness to and even asserted, but often received over justifications given that modern life is at a rather hypnotic state of being. Going against such flow isn't for the weak-willed. So disconnected from our own creations, yet we need them to feel whole or complete void fillers. The major player in our psychological world is the digital age that's still in its infancy as we remain so ourselves because of it. Some could even argue it's even more so the case. What's even more infantile is one's own understanding of just how the internet plays a role in one's own psychological growth or understanding of life itself. How does social media use affect the, the human spirit or the mind and it's more than social media, trust me. What has it changed about our cultures, our connections to one another? In my eyes, I'd say nearly everything involved with being human itself. From how and why we talk to each other, or where they might find comfort, or even the reasons why we seek pleasure. And where we seek it. Where there's now more comfort talking to each other via text message, rather than being in person or even conversing with a stranger. Something that I never did until I had my accident and I found the beauty in just letting the phone go and talking to random people I've never met before. More than just social media use, usage, it's infected our means to make a living from a time when people could show up to a place of employment and ask if help was needed, being thrown an apron in the process, to now when it's become lacking in any human context until many hoops have been jumped through. You have to have a perfect resume, you have to have good references, all this like toxic stuff. It's just, it uh, makes me gag a little bit. To fit the mold that's, dr that's changed drastically in the last 30 years that most choose to ignore, I believe I speak for the majority when I say humans were never meant to be robots. It's also made escaping reality much easier by immersing oneself into video games to the gluttonous extent, another means of seeking pleasure. Too much of anything can be a bad thing, especially when you know there's a problem but you haven't a clue how to attack it. It seems to be doing a very good job at keeping people clueless by dopamine-triggered pixelated illusions, also in reference to pornography and our very nature as human beings. That's so simply corrupted. All these things to, our, to take our attention away from where it truly matters, to ourselves and the world at large. 
What I believe to be perhaps the worst of areas it's infected is the state of interpersonal and romantic relationships, rotting away the very reason societies can and are stable, the nuclear family. Far beyond the American dream and well beyond mere religious marriages. It was frightening to learn a great deal of my own unknowns and insecurities were simply side effects of being raised in an asymmetrical household. That is to be single mothered. To destroy all human values, values seems to be the current motive of certain people of great influence, meaning we're susceptible to that type of influence, for the weakness in society is already present. Their ability to exploit this is all the more prevalent. All under a guise of our collective idea of free will with complete ignorance of what we consume, which means more than just food. One could even say the food that makes us think. Perhaps even what we consume that takes away from any kind of self-reflection, introspection, or critical thought. Our incessant need to avoid our own insights, no matter the cost. God forbid we decide to speak honestly around people who we think, who think they know us. Hence 2020 in my case. God forbid I did. Not to mention the realities of one not being able to openly discuss how we feel at any given moment without being seen as weak or insane, to speak free of the fear of judgment, thus only causing us to further retreat into ourselves to remain silent, the haunting echo chamber that is the human mind. And let me just say, the more you hide it, one day it comes out. Being in special education from kindergarten on through high school, did what anyone with an imaginative mind can comprehend. It cut me off socially. The only comfort I had was in my main area of interest, which is also known criteria for being diagnosed with Asperger's. Only in America could having a passion be seen as a bad thing. As I'm sure that some who watch this will know, the diagnosis of Asperger's has been changed to Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD in short. The reasons I use the word Asperger's is to help others reflect upon the ideas being put forth such as the origins of the so-called disorder's discovery, as well as the hypocritical notion that the label was changed to remove the stigma around such a diagnosis. They've only switched the names while the stigma remains existent. Not to mention the political affiliations, which shouldn't be just cause to change the name of a diagnosis. It makes the problem more elusive, more obscure, and much harder to communicate and understand. With no real history to fall back on par for the course, when we're trying so tirelessly, tirelessly to forget our own history, trying to pretend all issues humanity has ever faced have all been fixed. A common notion in high school, I remember. The treatments of such disorder across the globe vary greatly, including the treatments of it between the states and the U.S. themselves, not to forget the age in which the diagnosis is received, which can have vastly differing consequences in the long run, depending on the reasons we seek it. I never saw that. It was handed to me, lovely present, which for myself was at the age of five, beginning first with the diagnosis of ADHD, which eventually became, eventually becoming Asperger's syndrome. It shouldn't take one a tremendous amount of thought to comprehend that placing a child in special education has some rather detrimental effects as far as life itself is concerned, not to mention a stagnation in psychological growth or maturity, kind of like the virus keeping the mind in a state that it never can escape. Um, especially when independence is a responsibility placed on the shoulders of every soul, regardless of one's circumstance, even the circumstances that remain outside of said individual's control. Thus hinting at the toxic state of our disconnection from one another that we now face. One person's hell is another person's comparison. If there's one thing I could say that this treatment caused was severe emotional dysregulation, a severe lacking of my own emotional understanding, for I couldn't comprehend a means out of my own shell with walls put there, not by me, but by others around me, kept there by blind faith that what was and is known is dogmatic in nature, meaning assumed to be completely true. Not many have had to contend with reality in the way that I have, and for that I am grateful. In my case, I was gripped early on by a parasite known as my passion. My passion revolved around aerospace, an environment in which I had no connections to, but an aimless drive to be a part of, because I found it interesting that most people I've run into had families that were in the aviation community. I looked at planes and was just picked up by it. None of my family members were in it. Not such a fun path in America, especially because aerospace is rather egotistical. 
each option available meant selling my soul to only one road in life, which seems far too great, or seemed far too great of a sacrifice, being that this is the only life I get to live. Unless I could see the inner workings of my fantasy, I wanted no part in something so obscure. Contending with myself in reality itself was perhaps the best lesson I ever had, but also the most painful. Caught in the cons constraint of my ego's attachment to aerospace, like envisioning my own pyramid's apex, a fantasy, that when reached meant I had gotten as far away from America's bottom as possible. When the realities of my social difficulties settled and set, set in, sorry, there were too many choices which made me emotionally reckless, often causing more destruction in the long run. Always grasped by the idea that the grass is greener on the other side, that's not to say clinging to existence hasn't proved itself to be worthwhile. Pickard shoes. Quite a catch-22 that statement is. Most who live in such a meek, meek situations are told to stop thinking in such a way, thus diminishing their dreams of living a better life, a more contented and truthful existence, instead of lying to yourself that this is all life has to offer. Almost like we're told to just accept our environment, really. Instead, you're simply forced to exist in a state of soulless existence where you're shamed otherwise. Another catch-22. From having little to no support of social groups to feeling weak based upon my own lacking in human experience, being paid minimum wage while not being not seeing the light at any tunnel I sought to trek. Sorry, my English is bad at the end of this. Contending with my mother's drug addiction running from home to eventually finding momentary state of fragile stability when a friend's mother decided to take me in. This world has a virus-like effect to cause many to overthink reality, especially to those improperly socialized, who may choose to dwell in their fantasies, just keeps them away from thinking. Even now, given the digital age, socializing, socializing for many, has, seems to be a means to avoid oneself and to find comfort in a group rather than comfort in their own skin. To be social but to hide one's truths deep within. This is what I noted about myself when I finally became social in 2020. When all hope I had in life was running on empty, I found a state of bliss in experiencing something I never did in the past 27 years. A social life to be seen for the first time, feeling the most human when I had my human feeling the most human I had when I experienced my first kiss at such a late age I'm pissed off that I just screwed that up. the key takeaway from this is being wary of what little things can have drastic effects on a human's ability to understand themselves secluding them from the rest of rest at a key time when self-awareness becomes frighteningly active puberty uh, can often cause many to remain in an infantile state for an extended period of time, only seeking a means to avoid themselves because understanding themselves requires therapy and honest, trustworthy people. A rarity, I must say. Not, a f not false idols and not escape mechanisms. My experience is predominantly from the perspective of, Amer of America's bottoms, with, with sliver-like glances at the middle, of the upper at the middle and upper class in which the separation in realities became rather apparent, where I was worried about becoming homeless while, my fa while a family in California was worried about the ocean levels rising, possibly swallowing up their condo on the beach. I remember that vividly. Reaching a state where my own survival wasn't of major concern was a fantasy I was never given. Call it fate. I've learned more about life through the discomfort I've had than I would have if I had the comfort I so dreamt about reaching. It kept my mind active and in the most painful of ways. I decided to write this in order to make my argument and confrontations with society's norms more, more coherent, and if my English would get any better at the end of this, and less impromptu, to open a dialogue where there seemingly is none, to confront the organizations that perpetuate the flawed notion of these diagnoses. Asperger's isn't a disorder, not by a long shot. It's only a disorder because we simply don't mold into society Labeling us just keeps us in that perpetual loop of not being able to fit in. It can have its good sides and bad sides. It feels like shit for a long time, but it can often prove fruitful. Nowadays, I don't know if that's the case. I'd rather see it be the case. The first area this becomes necessary is the place where all social irreg irregularities are born. The education system. where the rabbit hole. We are the rabbit hole diggers, the people that have changed humanity. The people where if given the ability, can make our world far more human and much less robotic. 
that's only been the case for the last 30 years, given the digital age, really. Developing their characters up in the wall they face, it took me 27 years to understand myself. So, so have a little faith in yourself. I'd like to extend thanks to every single person that attempted to help me or was blatantly against me. Without the help, but also without someone doubting me, the endeavor would have been fruitless. The most improbable... The most important person I had to learn to contend with was myself, my own greatest enemy, between the person the world told me I was and the person I really was, hidden behind the psychological mask. This is the end of the video, or better yet, the end of the speech. My plans for the immediately, immediate future... Alright, I'm going to take a second and just calm down. My plan for the immediate future involves talking about depth psychology, psychedelics, Many other aspects of human life, especially the effects of the digital age that I've been, that I've barely even scratched the surface of here. Yet it's caused us to destroy ourselves in many ways. Perhaps we can learn from it, allowing the machine that has risen to also save us, because now we're more connected than ever, but we're also more disconnected than ever. To make a world better, a better place to live, which should be the aim of every living person on this earth. To learn from the pain rather than to perpetuate it further down the line and lie yourself that this is not a painful existence. Meanwhile, it really is. You can't hide it. You still show it on your face every time you go out. I may also do videos talking about stories of my past, for they are the easiest for others to relate to, so they too can process their past and their own traumas, and to find a state of blissful existence regardless of how ugly this world can be to another. Regardless of the pain, it's worth, it's worth living. And again, I want to apologize for taking 5,000 years to upload another video, but I had a lot to contend with after what happened in 2020. As I've mentioned in those videos, I'll do a better video. I might do a video regarding all of 2020, meaning the weirdest year of my life becoming the first time I was ever social, and that one day in March... No, it was late March when I had my first kiss. Very good memory. And then to the end of 2020 when I got completely socially dispossessed. That was my most valuable lesson. Right when I found myself, I was placed in another box. It makes so much sense now. So, Anyway, I hope you appreciated this video. And damn it, it was 20 minutes long. I was really hoping for it to be shorter. But I hope you took something from this. And I, I really hope to see you here again. Because now I'm probably going to make another video here soon and not be so delayed in the process now that I've got a camera set up instead of using my phone that has no memory available. But this all being said, I hope you appreciated this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. I'm probably going to do the 2020 story next. So thank you, have a good day.